continuing with lecture 310, let's take a look at an example of how geom area might be used. So this is, uh, we are installing this package called gcookbook. There's a textbook, a fairly good textbook on a ggplot cookbook or basically cookbook for plotting with R. Uh, it's uh, published by O'Reilly and I've taken this example from that book. So in order to get the data, data sets that are in the book, we have to install the package. The package is freely available, although the book is not. Uh, so I install the package and once we've installed the package, we can then do library G cookbook and that makes all the data uh, which is uh, in the package available for us. Just like when we did library uh, tidyverse, that in turn loaded ggplot and all the data that was in ggplot became available. In a similar sense, library G cookbook will make all the data from that package available to us. And one pack, one of the data sets within that package is called US pop age. This is a distribution of US population by different age segments over the years. Okay, so if you do that, you see this is the way the data set is. So for example, the in 1900, there were, uh, you know, the, all these numbers are in thousands. Uh, so roughly 9.1 million people who were less than five years old, and 17 million people who were between five and 14 and so on. So this is for the year 1900 and it's broken up into so many, uh, so many categories, less than five, five to 14, four, uh, 15 to 24, et cetera, et cetera, up to greater than 64. Okay, and this information is there for many years. We are seeing only a small segment here. And we do options SIPEN equals 999. That is just to ensure that in our displays, we don't get any scientific notations. We get all proper numbers. Okay, we've discussed this earlier when we talked about controlling the axis. SIPEN is a penalty for scientific notation. Okay, so now what we are doing is doing a geom area on this data. Okay, so we are saying ggplot US pop age, which is this data frame, and we are mapping X to year. We are mapping Y to this column called thousands. And we want to fill the area by the age group category, right? So we want to put a different color for the populations with different age groups. That's, that's what we do. So now you see an area plot, right? As you already understand, in an area plot, what you get is a line plot with the uh, area under the line being shaded. This time, we have said the fill color is going to depend on the age group, and therefore, you're getting multiple shadings for the different types of age groups that exist. The main difference between a line plot and an area plot, right? Geom line and geom area. The very main difference is geom area will always start the y-axis from zero. Okay, geom line may not. In fact, if we just pop back a little bit to our previous code, you will see that difference. I ought to have noticed here. This is geom line. It plotted the line, but notice that the y-axis did not start from zero. The system conveniently chose two because that was the minimum value in the Y range and it just chose that. Of course, you already understand that uh, using the things that we've already talked about in controlling the axis, you can control that. This is a default behavior. Whereas if you do an area plot, because it's trying to accurately reflect the areas under the line, it will always start from zero. Okay, so that's the key difference between a line plot and an area plot. Of course, the other key difference is that the area plot shades the area. Okay, so that's what is going on here. This is starting from zero and you get a different area plot for each of the age groups. Okay, now of course, uh, stat equals identity is the default, which means the area plot is going to just plot whatever values are there. It's not doing any binning or anything. Okay, and the other thing you have to note is that everything is stacked. Okay, so there is no overlapping. Uh, of course, this is not position equals identity. This is stat equals identity, which means don't do any conversions on the data. Position equals identity will mean something altogether different and it's in fact not applicable for geom area. Okay, so here what we are seeing is all the bands are heaped one on top of the other. And in fact, to clarify that, to make sure that's what it means, if we look at the plot for only age less than five, okay, which is uh, uh, this, the topmost 
region here that is what is less than 5 that actually looks like this if you looked at it uh, in close up okay now the, the details are not visible here because the scale is much bigger here whereas the scale is a lot smaller here in fact if you looked at the width of the band it will be roughly what you're seeing here okay so from that you can make uh, you know see that the individual areas are all stacked one on top of the other that's what's going on okay I call this a sanity check because if you're not sure it's always a good idea to do something else to verify what is going on and that's what I did okay I, I haven't shown the code for how I did that uh, but I just did this to to verify this later on you'll see how you can do this quite easily okay so here's another comparison between geom area and uh, geom uh, uh, this is a, a histogram of price okay so we've got GPs again ggplot diamonds X is mapped to price fill is mapped to cut and then we are doing a geom bar stat equals bin we could have done a geom histogram but this time we have just chosen to do geom bar and we have said stat equals bin that effectively makes it a histogram right because you're telling it use binning and do the bars okay so we it did the binning and it got the bars and that is roughly equivalent to doing a geom area okay notice how these two things look quite similar except that this is a more continuous version of this okay you can see that there is almost a one-to-one -one correspondence between the two in fact at this point and so on it starts looking almost identical okay so that's just another example okay now there are some other useful things we could do with uh, ggplot but there are you know there are many uh, some of the useful features which we were used to from base plot are just not available in ggplot so people have written additional packages one such additional package is the ggalley package in fact it's spelled with an uppercase g to begin with okay so install dot packages ggalley and then library ggalley uh, okay this is uh, this we need to check the spellings I think this should be second G also should be uppercase G galley okay and uh, we are just taking the data from empty cars which is again you know a built-in data set with R and we are taking only these columns in other words what you're doing here basically is we are taking only the numeric columns you will shortly see why we are taking only the numeric columns okay so that is basically a data frame containing only the numeric columns from empty cars and GG core is a function that is available in the G galley package okay so if you run that you get a nice correlation matrix a graphic representation of the correlation between the variables which is why because it's doing a numerical correlation coefficient which is why I chose only the uh, I chose only the numeric variables from that data frame okay so you can you can get this this if you remember you have used a function called cor uh, on numeric data frames to calculate the correlation matrix this is basically a correlation matrix but represented by color if you also want to see the numbers you can say label equals true and you will get the color and you will also get the number indicating the correlation coefficient okay of course correlation coefficients are symmetric in the sense that the correlation of a and b is the same as the correlation of b and a therefore it's enough if we see only half of the matrix you don't have to see the whole matrix and that's what is being shown here okay the colors indicate the level of correlation a uh, very high correlation is this very low correlation uh, is this or very high negative correlation is this very high positive correlation is that zero is right in the middle okay so obviously any colors which are uh, close to white are low correlations otherwise you're indicating a somewhat higher correlation depending on either side plus or minus okay so this is also another thing remember there was a, a function called uh, pairs which we used from base graphics to generate a scatter plot matrix unfortunately ggplot doesn't have a scatter plot matrix of its own I don't know why so the ggalley package fixes that problem and with the ggalley package you do gg pairs remember the original function was called pairs they just called it gg pairs so with gg pairs you'll get the same effect okay now the original pairs would show as graphs on both sides and as we've already discussed 
you know this if you want to see the graph on this side it's just going to be a flipped version of the same chart so there's no point showing it so they are using that place to give us the correlation coefficient instead okay so this is sort of like a, a, a scatter plot matrix combined with the correlation information and usefully what they are also doing is along the diagonal they are showing the density of each of those variables individually so mpg looks like this the density and so on so you see a slight uh, you know uh, do, 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 double modality here a uh, bimod bimodality here and so on okay so this is giving a lot of information in one single plot okay so the, that's just two useful functions from the gg uh, g galley package Another quite useful geom is what is called as geom ribbon. In fact, although we have not used geom ribbon, you have seen it being used indirectly. Shortly, you will understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so here I'm just creating some uh, data frame. So, for example, level is one three four seven, uh, low response is one two point five three point two four point eight, and high response is low response plus some random factor. Right. So, what I'm creating is a set of uh, basically two sets of values low response high response so the point is that you did some experiment on you know by giving some level of some treatment so for example this may be the dosage of some medicine that you gave to uh, you know some people and these are the responses of the people right so the low response of whatever it is how they responded to that dosage of medicine the values were uh, you know for a dosage of 1 the, the low response was 1 and for a dosage of 3 the low response was 2.5 etc right? so it's some made up data and high response is among the people who got that dosage what was the high level of the response you know pe some people would have had a high response some people would have had a low response or somebody in the group and these I just generated the high response by doing a little random uh, adding a random amount to the low response okay so this is just to create some data because to to plot a ribbon you need low level and high level okay and there is also a mean response that I wanted to create right just so that there's some value in between so I just chose some values in between these two okay so that is data dot frame level low response high response okay so level is this uh, the 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 level of the treatment which is basically what we are mapping to the x-axis and to the y-axis we are mapping low response and high response okay so that is when you plot a ribbon you have to say what is the low value what is the high value that's what this is and mean response I'm just putting as uh, as the y value itself this is the low y value this is a high y value this is the y value itself and once you plot that okay so this is what we are doing so first plot is uh, x equals level y min is low response y max is high response and then we say plus geom ribbon okay so this is what is going to plot the ribbon so basically what it's going to do is for every x it's going to put uh, plot the uh, the low the y min and y max and it's going to create a band okay so the result is going to look like this right so if, if you look here the first point is uh, 1.0 1.8 okay so low response is 1 okay that's right here and high response is 1.8 that's right there okay so the low response is here high response is there okay low response is 1 high response is 1.8 that's that's the ribbon that's being plotted and the second point is uh, low response is 2.5 high response is 3.2 okay so low response is uh, Oh, x is 2.5 so x is somewhere somewhere here and uh, uh, no sorry x is level so x is at level which is 3 that is somewhere here and the low response is 2.5 that's right there and the high response is 3.29 which is right there okay so the x-axis is level so we should only be looking at 1 3 4 and 7 okay so 1 3 4 and 7 the system has just drawn a straight line okay so what basically geom ribbon does is you give it the low value and the high value for y 
and it puts a band based on that. And I just said fill it with a gray 85 color. There are many colors and this is just one of the color constants, some kind of a gray. I just chose that. Okay. Now within the ribbon, you might also want to plot the, uh, you know, oh, this is the same graph. And I'm also plotting a line now. Right. So this is the ribbon which was up earlier. And now I'm saying plot the mean response as a straight line. So we are using geom line. Of course, what we are going to get is the ribbon, the band and the line in between, which is the mean response. Okay, so that's that's what we are getting here. Quite straightforward. Okay, now the reason I said that we have already seen this before is, after all, when you do geom smooth, and if you get the standard error, they are plotting that obviously using geom ribbon. That's what they are doing, right? The confidence limits that it, that they are putting around the uh, around the the smooth line is basically a geom ribbon. Okay, so now we know how they are doing it. Okay, now if you change the order of the geoms, you could try it out. What will happen is that uh, the line will be plotted first and the ribbon will come on top and you will be seeing the line through the gray value, right? The line will have some level of transparency. I mean, the, the shaded gray will have some level of transparency and you will be seeing the line through the shaded value. 